Hi, Joe Cerrone. Welcome to our weekly meeting for CAD 117, Intermediate AutoCAD. <clears throat> we'll be releasing the module seven this week, which is mechanical working drawings. And we will 3D print these parts for you as well. We, we like to have a hands-on activity. And so the plan is to go through and to create these components and then to create the assembly drawing. Uh, the way that we'll draw these is that we'll model them in AutoCAD and then we'll use multi-liters with a symbol uh, like a balloon for these and we'll add a bill of material. If we look at the book lessons, we can start by clicking on this blue line and it talks about isometric drawings and I talked to Al about it before class today and we really feel that this class is moving along really well with the 3D modeling. And with isometrics being kind of a lesser power than 3D modeling, we're gonna go and work with the 3D modeling. And so um, chapter 11 covers that material. And so if I click on 11, we're talking about mechanical working drawings. And basically what we're talking about is how you put things together. That's what uh, a working drawing would be and then creating an exploded drawing. Instead of an isometric, we'll make it a model. Uh, it's a lot more useful because we can 3D print it. And then we'll create detail. Um, we don't need to necessarily do details of each of the parts, but you're welcome to do that. And what a detailed drawing is, is it's a fully dimensioned part so that it can be manufactured. And so when we look at uh, mechanical working drawings, what we're talking about here is uh, drawings that are set to show how things are assembled. And so when we look at a working drawing, um, and this would be typical when I would design machines, I'd have an assembly, uh, how to put that machine together, because there is very often different versions of that machine, things like different conveyor heights or different options. And so what an assembly drawing is, is it's a it's typically a pictorial, pictorial being a, a three-dimensional view with a call out, which relates to a bill of material. And so you'd have the part, you would then refer to it in the bill of material, and it would then tell you what those parts are, and then it would tell you where that information is. We would also then show how those parts are assembled with a center line so that you can see that this, this bolt goes through this washer, through this hole, and you can figure out how to put it together. And so that's what's known as an exploded assembly drawing. And so as we look at this, they're just explaining kind of the same thing, that we assign these part numbers, and then we use uh, what's called a balloon, which would be a multi-liter with a circle in it, and that would then refer to the part number, which would then be called out. And then showing how parts go together, And then here's our bill of material showing each of the balloon parts or item numbers. They just use part numbers. I would have used a little bit more complicated, a little bit more numbers than just one, two, three. And then here's the description of the parts and where to find the information for that. And then <clears throat> typically they'll have detailed drawings. And so you'll give the, um, the manufacturing department the assembly drawing with all of the details. And then, you know, the guys on the shop floor can read the prints, they can take a look at them, see if they're right, understand how things go together, they can be able to see things like thread call outs and things like that. You don't have to do the, uh, the detail drawing, but you're welcome to it. And so here's again, how that drawing looks and a basic summary. And then here's the actual drawing itself where we would get the dimensions for that part. And so this toe stop base um, is created in this manner. Um, and as I look at it, I'll show you where the videos are to show you how to do that rather than to just kind of call it out and point to it. But you've got the toe stop base, you've got the cleat, you've got the cleat pin and that's basically it, these three parts. And then there's a, a washer and a nut. 
And so as we call out all these different parts, this is our bill of material for that part. So we get the toe shop base, cleat, cleat pin, hex head cap screw, hex head nut, plain washer. And what I tell people to do is to download the washer from McMaster Car. You can download AutoCAD drawings, and I believe it's in the video. If not, I'll, come, I'll show you how to do that. Also, you know, working with dimension styles, as you start to work with these mechanical drawings, just like with the architectural drawings, we want to standardize those things. And so as you look at these um, dimension style settings, you're going to want to duplicate those for your own drawings. And there's not a, a lot to it. They're doing this at full scale in the dimensions. Uh, and so there's not a change for the dim scale. And some things as far as laying out like we've done in the past with our 2D drawings. How to read a screw thread and information like this is um, it's, it's from a machinist handbook, but everything is very standardized in the mechanical world. And so you can't just say, hey, go get me a bolt. You got to say, I want, you know, a socket head cap screw that has this thread pitch on it. And so that's kind of how that's set up. The major diameter, the 0.75 would be the size of the shaft here. That would be three quarters of an inch. And the number of threads per inch refers to like the the ridges, and if you hold a ruler up to it one inch, you would count 10 peaks on that. And then UNC means Unified National Course. The more accurate the fit, the higher the precision, and so you have coarse and fine threads. And then you have these classes of fit as we go through and talk about nuts and bolts. And so it goes through quite a bit of information as far as showing you how to calculate and to show you how to do these different fits. They, they show you how to do this with isometric drawing and ellipsis, um, but the techniques that we're going to use are going to be in three-dimensional drawing. And so I'm going to go and switch over to that. So here is um, the lab information. And so here's the PDF. Same thing, just with the dimensions on it. And then if I come back here to the um, E size paper, I'm not sure why he has E, but if we go with this B size paper, you can certainly open up this title block and have a blank sheet of paper to work on. Switching back over. Hopefully this is the one. Yeah, I had a feeling it would do that. Uh, let's go back to It tends to glitch when I hit some of the links, 115, 117, and back to, um, so I downloaded this and showed you that you can open the B size. Um, I'm not sure what, what this is. Let's see what that is. Okay, so that's just miscolored. It should be blue. And it did it again. And so let me go back here. What it does is it glitches to the previous semester. I think Gail's got some links in there that's doing that. And so here's the videos for this. Okay, part one. And I'll basically walk you through creating this part. And so I'll draw this toe stop. I'll extrude it. I'll make the base and I'll extrude that. And then I'll show you how to create objects on different surfaces. I have a, a three point UCS, which allows the XY plane to be right there. And then I just draw construction lines. That's what that red line is. And I like to make intersections. I could have used the midpoint, but it, it's graphically easier to understand when you have X marks the spot. And then I'll go through and I'll just create a circle at that intersection to the specifications in the drawing. 
And then we can take that and we can press pull that or extrude it to get the geometry like that. So it's pretty fun. I like it because you get into some basic modeling skills. Uh, the lab is well developed for you uh, with good videos that you can just pause and stop. Um, and so I think you'll learn a lot on this one. And then if we come back to the main splash page again, and then we look at the next lab and did it do it again? Yeah. Good. And so when we look at part two, get rid of the audio on that. We'll make the bottom of it. And then in part three, if I can get there, I think it's over here. Yeah, that's what's going on. We can kind of walk through creating the pin. And there's a number of different ways to do these. Um, I like to revolve things sometimes. And then I put chamfers on them. You can use the chamfer command. And when you use the chamfer command, you're gonna be doing those in solids. And so as we, as we look at, at the way that this was developed, I'm using a 3D workspace here. And then on the solids tab, is where you want to use the commands for creating the chamfers. And so we're moving over to that. And there it is, chamfer edge. And all you do is program in the distance. These are 45 degree chamfers, which means the distance would be the same amount in both the first in the second value. And then you just select the edge of the part. It'll give you a, a preview of it. And then you hit enter twice to accept the values for it. And so we go through and we create the pins. And I'll show you some techniques like how to be able to locate things in 3D. And so that's that video. And then if I come back here, part four. This is good. You should at least watch the part four because what I'm showing you is how you can download this file from McMaster Car. And I'm not sure how to make this bigger. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to let me, I can speed it up. Um, but with that, if you go to McMasterCar.com and you search for the specific fasteners, what's nice is a lot of these online cataloging companies now are hiring a lot of our CAD people because um, they want the part models. And the, if the part models are used in the CAD drawings and they refer to their part numbers, then they go back and order them from McMasterCar. And so when you find the part that you want, you can then download the CAD file as a solid. And so you can download the file. And I believe we download this one as a SolidWorks file and then we import it. And so it allows you to import SolidWorks files into AutoCAD and it'll convert them. And so that's what we do here. And so we import that part and there it is way better than having to draw it, especially nuts and bolts, stuff that you buy, because it should be perfectly accurate if it's coming from the manufacturer. So this will be our first assembly in 3D printing project. And what I'll do is I'll show you how to use 3D rotate, how to line up the parts. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll draw lines up in the Z axis and then I'll just move them endpoint to endpoint, or I'll put points on them. But it, just a really good, and there I was just doing it, 
So I'll kind of put a rocket up there and then I'll assign those different components to the endpoints of it. When you start to lay things out three dimensionally, it's kind of hard to figure out what perspective. So I always use the same isometric viewing angle. I typically take the Southeast viewing angle. And then the idea is, is as you start to decide, well, where do I want to put these parts? How far apart do they go in an exploded assembly? My way of doing it would be to, to just leave enough space so that you can see the separation between the different parts. It's easier to understand if there's a little white space between them rather than have the parts so close that they're overlapping. And so I'll kind of go through that. I don't know how to get rid of that. There we go. How to get a nut. And then how to update the assembly information. And then if I come back here, I'm not sure what's in five. Five is probably just annotating the title block and touching up things. So yeah, once we get everything, we just wanna make sure we can put it together. And then this is how you put in a, a tag, okay? Or a bill of material. And so if I back that up just a little bit, a little bit more. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a multi-leader here. And in that multi-leader, I have a style defined. And so you need to set up the multi-leader in the multi-leader style right there. And so, in the multi-leader format, we'll just use regular arrowheads. But here, instead of not having anything on the content tab, we select circle. And then when we put in a multi-leader for this, it will come in with a circle, which then will give us an attribute upon insertion that you can put in the number that goes in the circle. And so if you've never done that, this is a good technique to show you how to create a leader with a circle and a balloon as they call it. And then how to create a table for our bill of materials. We'll put the table in. So this will keep you busy if you're not um, getting out of town for spring break. Um, it's a little tough to get out of town as, as it is. Uh, going back here to our main splash page. And then there's information in module seven. So if we go to content, here's module seven. Here's the lecture information in PowerPoint form. You can download that, B-size mechanical, PDFs. And then here's the, here's the labs, or at least the videos when you see the word web page, those are typical. If you don't want to download the McMaster car, it looks like I've got one here for you. So you can just use my bolt. It's not as good, but this is how a lot of times we would model these. We would just put a helix on it and then have a solid model of it. Um, but it's an assembly drawing. It's, it's not necessarily for production of the detail parts. And then if I switch back, let me see if I can do that. Here we are. Um, here's our prototype. And that's basically it. Um, as we look at how the course is rolling out, um, we're pretty good as far as our sequence of topics. We're on, on task. And so if we take a look here, we're at March 10th. And so here's module seven. So uh, we're actually right on task. And so module seven, and then next week is spring break. So we will not have a meeting for that. If you're wondering about, you know, what's going on at the college, you can just click on this, on this link to the academic calendar. And then we'll review for the midterm after break. And so uh, typically we'll give you um, a review session on the midterm, and then we'll give you time like uh, till the next week to finish that. And we're proctoring the, uh, the exam so that we use a proctor service called um, Honor, Honor Lock. And basically when you, when you take the test, you have a, a webcam on your laptop that you have to activate and show an identification. They do charge for that. Um, they charge $11 for unlimited numbers of tests or $7 for one. We recommend you pay the $11 and then you can take the final exam that way also. And the reason we do that, it's not that we don't trust you, it's that 
what happens if somebody says, hey, he didn't do that drawing. I know for a fact that somebody else did that for him. He didn't do any of those. Well, we have this proctoring service then that will validate your identity and, um, and then make sure that you are who you say you are. So as we go through and we, we work with these drawings, um, we'll continue to do the same. You know, we'll come back to architectural drawings as well. Uh, where we'll do some more architectural assembly type work or bigger, better drawings. Here's our 3D printing project where we'll print out that um, toe stop assembly. And we'll continue to improve our CAD skills with uh, 3D modeling. All right, so that's our quick review. I'm gonna go back to the main splash page and stop the recording and then I'll open things up for questions.